are you ready to launch your very own super inexpensive, extremely professional, speed conscious, and even search engine optimized for SEO WordPress website in five easy steps? Well, I'm Tiffany Youngren with OnlineMarketingHelp.net here in beautiful Montana on a gorgeous fall day. Let's get started. You know, I always try to get the most value for the lowest cost, which is why you'll see that I buy domain names from GoDaddy.com and host websites with Bluehost.com. You can find a domain name seller and site host that work well for you, but for demonstration purposes, we're just going to use those two. Before we start, let's save even more money. RetailMeNot.com almost always has discount codes for GoDaddy and sometimes for Bluehost, although the prices are usually very low for both vendors already. Next, let's set up your domain name. I usually brainstorm great domain name ideas for a website that include the keyword, then search availability and purchase the winner on GoDaddy.com. The files and images, all of your website data is hosted on a website server. Not all hosts are well suited for WordPress websites, and I find Bluehost to be a great host with a lot of options. Leaving the GoDaddy tab open, Open another tab in your browser and go to bluehost.com. The most affordable way to have your website hosted is through what's called a shared server. Without complicating things too much so early on, just know that a shared server is less expensive, but it can be slower and a little bit problematic as your website traffic increases. A dedicated server is the most expensive, but as the name suggests, it is dedicated to your website. In the middle is a VPS server. Bluehost also offers optimized WordPress hosting for a higher price. I start with a shared basic hosting service and move up as needed. When you purchase your web hosting through Bluehost, be prepared to pay for one year upfront. I recommend the professional backup services as well. Also, get the SSL service as soon as you can. To keep costs down when starting out, I typically build the initial website without it and then I add it as revenues increase. Now let's set up an email address. Once you're logged on to the Bluehost cPanel, click on Email Accounts. Type in the email address you would like, enter a strong password that includes a combination of lower and uppercase letters, at least one number, and at least one other character. So there you have it. You bought your domain name through GoDaddy and your website is hosted through Bluehost. Now let's just connect the two. You're going to need to find what is called Bluehost's name server so you can plug it into GoDaddy. Once it's plugged in, Bluehost can recognize that you do, in fact, own that domain name. Go back to your Bluehost cPanel and click on Domain Manager and click Transfer a new domain to your account. On the right, you can see the two name servers, ns1.bluehost.com and ns2.bluehost.com. I'm pretty sure that's always what the two name servers are but it's good to know where to find them. Go to the GoDaddy tab in your browser. Click on Domains and then click Manage to the right of the domain name you'd like to assign to your new WordPress website. Uh, you can see from this control panel that I do have several web addresses, so for yours it should be easy. It should just be on the first page. Below the Settings tab and under Name Servers, click Manage. The default is standard setup type, and the domain central name servers are usually what you'll see for your new domain. Select the custom setup type and click edit name servers. Type the two Bluehost name servers, ns1.bluehost.com in the first field and ns2.bluehost.com into the second field, and then click OK. It can take anywhere from a minute to 90 minutes for the name server to fully update in GoDaddy. Now let's assign the domain name to your hosting account. Go back to the Bluehost tab and open your cPanel. Scroll down and click Domain Manager again, then select Assign a Domain to your cPanel account. Under Step 1, select Use a domain that is not already associated with your account and type in your domain. Bluehost should automatically kick into step two by verifying the name server. If the GoDaddy name server has updated, this verification process is going to go super easy and super smoothly. If it has not updated with GoDaddy, you're going to need to wait just a little bit longer and try again. 
Once your domain is verified, it is time to install WordPress. Go back to your Bluehost cPanel and select Install WordPress. On the Do It Yourself page, click Install. Make sure the correct domain is selected in the drop-down menu, including considering whether you'd like it installed with or without the www at the beginning. The drop-down will allow either. Click Check Domain and Install. Watch the progress. Once the View Credentials button is available, click on it. The alert should confirm that WordPress has installed. Click View Credentials to reveal your web address, admin URL, username, and password. Oh my gosh, we are ready to start setting up your actual WordPress website. Go to the admin panel by either clicking on the link from the installation credentials page on Bluehost or by typing the admin panel URL into your browser. And that's what you'll do in the future is just type that URL in there. Enter your username, password, and log in. The first time you arrive to your admin panel will be a bit different than it will be in the future. WordPress also often updates and sometimes changes the admin panel. I like to first reduce the amount of files that can clutter a WordPress website, so I clean up the themes and plugins that I'm not using. Right now, let's clean up the plugins. Click Plugins on the left navigation bar, then select all of the plugins. In the drop-down menu, select Deactivate and click Apply. Select All again, choose Delete in the drop-down, then click Apply. Then click Yes, delete these files and data. Plugins must be deactivated before they can be deleted. Next, set the permalinks. There is a lot written about permalinks, which you are welcome to read up on. I will show you how I often set my permalinks. Within Settings, select Permalinks. Click Custom Structure. For SEO reasons, I like the URL of each post to show right after the web address, but I also prefer to have its unique post number right after just in case I forget and name two posts the same thing, which is not a good thing, but it could happen. When I forget the structure tags for the post number, I click the link on the setup page for WordPress's explanation and list of options. Here, I highlight the structure tag for the post ID and paste it within the structure I choose. Be sure to include the slash at the end as shown or other functions may not work properly. Now let's take care of general settings. Enter your site title, tagline or subheading, and email address. Check the other settings and save the changes. Going right down the line in the settings options, go to the writing settings. I don't usually change anything here, but you can see there are options. Next, go to the reading settings. You can see that you can select whether the front page is a static page or post page, or your front page is made up of your latest posts. Because we have not yet uploaded the theme, we'll just leave it for now. When you get to, for each article in a feed, show, select summary, and save changes. Now go to the discussion settings. There are many options that are really up to you. I often change these settings once the website is launched if I find them problematic. I do like users to be registered and logged in to comment and for comments to be manually approved, which means if someone submits a comment, I'm alerted and then I can approve it or discard it. And I don't like to receive an email notifications. The dashboard notifications are sufficient for me. I usually leave media settings as default, but you can see that there are options. Okay, now it's time to clean up themes and add your theme. Hover over Appearance on the left menu, then click Themes. Always leave one default WordPress theme. When the theme author updates the theme that you use, which happens periodically, it is a good idea to activate the WordPress default theme prior to updating the theme that you're using. However, you only need one default WordPress theme in your library. The rest can be deleted by clicking Theme Details and Delete. 
I usually use premium or paid themes. In the future, I'll show you how to add a premium theme. For now, let's just add a free one. Free themes can still be highly effective, but many of the features are not available unless you purchase the theme. On the themes page, click add new. WordPress populates this page with the featured themes. You can also browse popular themes or search by feature. Today, we're going to use the optimizer theme. Search for optimizer, hit enter, then click install on the desired theme. Click activate. Now that optimizer is your current theme, let's do some customizing. While on the themes page, click the customize button on the current optimizer theme. There are quite a few options, so let's work our way from the top to the bottom. Starting with the basic settings, you can see that there is some flexibility with this and most themes. You can set the site layout and background and fonts throughout the site. The site icon can be set by uploading a square image that you would like as the icon on the tab, also called a favicon. Look at the top of your browser right now. You can see the title of this page, then the icon to the left of it. Once you upload your square icon image, be sure to enter the title and alt text. This is an important step and one of the easiest ways to improve search engine optimization or SEO. Best practices is to include your current page keyword phrase within the file name your image is saved as and in your title and alt tags. On this settings page, you can select whether you'd like the top menu transparent or with a background color. Check out the difference. I personally prefer no title or tagline on this theme, so they can be deleted. It is much cleaner and guides the eye right to the call to action. And my goal here is that the viewer look right at the call to action. Now click on the front page settings. Under the slider, you can change the image. Again, when you upload the image, use the keyword within the title and the alt text. The title is what the visitor will see when the cursor hovers over the image. The alt text is what shows up if the image is ever broken or otherwise does not appear when the page is loaded. To change the text on the slider, click Edit Content. Here you can change the text field. Right now we'll change the image. You can't see it in the editor here because the logo image is white with a white background in the text editor. We know it's there, so select it, delete it, click delete on your keyboard, and upload the image you would like to use. When uploading images, they can be edited within WordPress. Here you can see the image is very large and not proportionate to the rest of the page. Let's resize the image. Always, always, always scale it. Never change both dimensions or the image will appear distorted, which is very unprofessional. We actually talk more about editing and optimizing images in one of the future sessions within this video series. Next, click button one and edit the text you'd like to see in the button and the link when clicked. Repeat for button two. If you'd like, you can edit other slider settings, but I usually leave them as they are. The settings on the theme customization override the main WordPress website settings we adjusted earlier. Here you can see a static front page or latest posts as the lower portion of this home page. Now let's change the footer. We won't add any widgets or change the style, but we will customize the footer text with the copyright information and a couple of helpful links that are good to have handy at the bottom of the page. Every text content editor in WordPress looks the same. It looks like this. If you only see one row of buttons above the main editing section, click what's called the kitchen sink button to expand the second row. There is a symbol button on the second row. Here we insert a copyright symbol the company name, a divider, and text for the home page and legal info page.
To add a link to the home page, highlight Home Page and then click the link symbol. You can type in a URL or click or link to existing content and select the page you would like to link to it. Here we'll type in the URL to the landing page. There's also a checkbox to open the link in a new window. Very rarely do I ever, if ever, open a link within my own site in a new window. We haven't set up a legal info page, so we'll come back to this later. There are many post and page settings that can be changed, but I usually leave them set as the default settings. In the miscellaneous settings, go to the social link settings. You can change some appearance options, but just enter the URLs for your social media pages. The SEO settings for this theme is only available when the pro version is purchased. We'll leave the mobile layout, custom code, and other settings as they are. Click Save and Publish. Hey, now let's add some plugins, which add amazing functionality to your website. You saw that the theme disabled a lot of functions for us free users. Here is where you're going to take some of them back. There are countless free and premium plugins for WordPress. You'll want to just use the ones that you love because the more you add, the slower your site. We'll add and set up several that I commonly use. Be sure to wait until the end of this video and download the free guide that gives you a checklist of the steps that we're walking through now, and also an updated list of the plugins that I use. Go back to the dashboard by using the back arrow or type your WordPress admin URL into your browser. Go to the plugins page and click add new. First let's add SEO by Yoast. It makes optimizing for SEO on each and every page and post super easy, and it works really, really well. Search for the plugin, then click Install Now. To maximize efficiency, we're going to wait to activate the plugins until they're all installed. So click Return to Plugin Installer. Next, search for and install the W3 Total Cache. It can speed up your site and do a huge number of other things to increase search engine and page speed results. This is the one plugin that we're not going to activate today and set up because it is a bit complicated. W3 Total Cash provides excellent tutorials that I highly recommend. We may even cover it in a blog post at a later date. W3 Total Cash seems to improve websites dramatically, but it can also break your website if not installed correctly. So please check the tutorials and take some time to set it up and check that your site still works properly. One hint is to set it up, but wait to activate the minify options until you have four to eight hours to do it properly. Setting up all but the minify options takes very little time, but still can improve your site markedly. Now search for auto terms of service and privacy policy, which creates just that for you to add to your website, a terms of service and privacy policy. Install it and return to the plugin installer. Now search for Simple 301 Redirects and install. Whenever you change a post URL or a page URL or a category slug within your website, Google is still going to crawl that old URL and think that you have a broken link in your website. Checking Google or other services for broken links on a regular basis is an absolute must. And when those broken links show up, you can redirect that old broken link to a working page through simple 301 redirects. I love this plugin. Contact Form 7 is a simple, versatile form that you can add to your website, and you'll be glad you did. I prefer to have a contact form on the Contact Us page over giving out your email address. Spammers can scrape business websites for email addresses, so using a form can avoid that. EWWW Image Optimizer optimizes images as you upload them to your website. You can also go back and optimize images that were uploaded to your site prior to its installation. This plugin default reduces images size without losing image quality. 
I only use Site Origin Widgets Bundle if I'm using a free template. If you have a template with more advanced features, which by the way does not make a template harder, it usually just makes your options way more amazing. But if you have a template with short codes, drag and drop design, and other features, this plugin will most likely interfere with functionality. The theme I used for OnlineMarketingHelp.net is absolutely my favorite, probably the most versatile and user-friendly I've ever used. It has the most features and the most customizing options. I paid about $59 for each site that I use it on, and it is money well spent because I know how easy and amazing it is. Now, when using a free template like Optimizer, Site Origins Widgets Bundle adds back a lot of premium type functionality to building posts and pages. To enable drag and drop page building capabilities and super easy use of the Site Origins widgets, also add the Site Origins Page Builder plugin. Starbox, the author box for humans, <laughs> is a helpful little tool to add customizable author boxes to posts and includes Google authorship data. I love seeing information about the author at the bottom of the page when I'm reading posts, and this little guy does it very well. WP User Avatar adds an avatar to your and other registered users' profiles. It works really well with Starbox by adding the image to the author info. Now go back to the plugin installation page and select all. Then deselect W3 Total Cache because you'll set that up at another time. In the bulk options drop down, select Activate. Let's configure Starbox. You can see here that you can select where the author box shows up. Your own WordPress user settings as the admin are the defaults for your own author box. Because we have not yet updated those settings for you, we'll do it now. Click Go to User Settings. Choose and then upload a square image from your computer that you would like to use as your profile picture. Your username must remain the same, but insert the remaining profile information and select how you would like your name to show up in the author box. Add social media links at the top. Go to the bottom and select and upload your profile picture again, remembering to add your title and alt text. There are a couple of display options here, so choose your favorite. Fill in your job title, company name, URL, and biographical information. Be sure that you use your main focus keyword phrase, preferably in both the title and biographical information, for the best SEO. Enter your Twitter and Facebook links in this bottom section. Click Update Profile and check out how cool your new Starbucks author box looks. Hover your cursor over Plugins on the top left menu and click Installed Plugins. Every time you want to go back to the Installed Plugins page, that is what you're going to do. Starting at the top, click Settings under the Auto Terms of Service and Privacy Policy plugin title. Turn it on and add your information to the fields. I usually use any default information as it is. Save the changes. Since we're here, let's go ahead and create the legal info or terms of service and privacy policy page. Alternatively, you could create two pages, a Terms of Service page and a Privacy Policy page. Just select the Terms of Service shortcode, create the page, and repeat for the Privacy Policy. So with the shortcode highlighted, copy or Control c and then hover over plus new on the top menu bar and click Page. Paste or Control v the shortcode into the text area of the new page. Then, add the page title and scroll down to the Yoast SEO section.
button and click Advanced. We're going to tell the search engines not to index or search for this page because it's not a very good landing page. In the Meta Robot Index drop-down, select No Index, select No Follow, and click Publish. Now I'm going to show you how to use the contact forms and set up the spam fighting feature, which is awesome. Go back to the installed plugins and select Settings under Contact Form 7. You can see that there's a short code for each form, and that is what you're going to copy and paste into any page or post, just as we did with the Terms of Service and Privacy Policy. Let's take a look at the default form. Click Edit under Contact Form 1. As you get comfortable, you can add, change, or take out fields and change the format. But for now, we're, this form's just going to work great. Check the Mail tab to confirm that the settings are correct, making any changes that are needed. You can also take a look at the default messages and change them if you'd like. You can see the additional settings tab. I have never edited this. Be sure to click save if you've made any changes. Again, the short codes are for copying and inserting forms on your site. You can also add forms. Contact Form 7 has its own menu on the left. Click Integrations in that section. Contact Forms 7 uses Google's free reCAPTCHA service to make sure only humans fill out your forms and not spam bots. So let's set it up. I love how easy this plugin makes it for you to integrate Google's reCAPTCHA service into it. Be sure that you are logged into Google before you start this. If you don't have a Google account, set one up now. As I guide you through this process, you'll probably see additional screens setting up other Google services. Push pause on the video and go through that process until you see the screen shown in the video. Now right click the link google.com slash recaptcha and open it in a new tab so that you're always leaving your settings tab there where you need it. Under register a new site, add the title. This can be the name or URL of your website. Add the domain and your email address, then click register. Go back to the contact form 7 tab and click configure keys. Now don't get scared, it's not hard, this is super easy. You can see that you need a site key and secret key. Go back to the Google's tab and highlight and copy each of those codes and paste them into the respective fields and click Save. Go back to the Installed Plugins page and we'll just take a look at the EWWW Optimized Images settings. I don't usually change the settings, but let's just take a look at them. The next plugin we'll visit is the Simple 301 Redirects. Instead of going to the Installed Plugins page, hover over the Settings on the left menu and click 301 Redirects. For any broken link or link that you'd like to redirect, type in or paste the URL not including the root domain URL of your own website into the field on the left just like the examples at the top of the page show. Insert the URL of the page to which you would like it redirected in the field on the right. Save yourself a lot of work and frustration by always finishing up by scrolling down and clicking Save Changes. Back at the Installed Plugins page, click on Settings under WP User Avatars. I do like to allow subscribers to upload their own avatars. You can also upload your own custom unknown user avatar for those users who have not uploaded an image. Again, if you make any changes, click Save Changes. Now let's open the Yoast SEO settings. On the left menu, hover over Yoast SEO and starting at the top, click General. Click on the Your Info tab at the top of the page. When we set up the theme, we deleted the title and tagline from the home page. Here is where we're going to add it back in for SEO purposes, but it still won't appear on the home page. Enter the information and upload the logo image you would like to use. This is the information that Google and other search engines will see. Save changes. 
Okay, now we're going to get serious about connecting to search engines. Again, if you don't already have accounts with the companies, you'll probably need to set up an account and be redirected back to the page you'll see in our video. Be sure to open the search engine pages as new tabs every time so you can easily go back to your Yoast SEO tab. If you need to set up accounts with Alexa, Bing, Google, and Yandex and get lost far from the page, our video shows why you're doing it, you can always go back to the Yoast SEO tab and reopen the search engine setup page to get to where you need to be. On the Yoast SEO page, click Alexa Verification ID. Enter your site URL and click Continue. Advanced users can use method 1 to verify your site with Alexa, but we're going to keep it simple. Select method 2 and highlight and copy the contact code, then paste it into the Alexa Verification ID field on your Yoast SEO page. Click on Bing Webmaster Tools. Sign in, click Add Site on the left menu bar, type in your URL, and click Add. Highlight the content code within the example code as shown. Copy it and paste it into the Bing Webmaster Tools field on your Yoast SEO page. On the Yoast SEO page, click Google Search Console. Again, there are advanced ways to verify your site. For now, click on the Alternate Methods tab and select HTML tag. Click Show Me an Example. Highlight and copy the content tag. Then paste it into the Google Search Console field on your Yoast SEO page. Now click Yandex Webmaster Tools. Under How do I confirm my site management rights, click on Add a Site. Type your URL into the field and click Add. Highlight the verification number under the HTML tag, copy the number, and paste it into the Yandex Webmaster Tools field on your Yoast SEO page. While still on the Yoast SEO page, click Save Changes. Very important. On the left menu bar under SEO section, click Titles and Metas. There are many options here. I leave most defaults as they are, but I prefer a vertical line as a title separator, which is weird and you can do whatever you want. But, and I do like to add the date on post snippet previews. Now click social in the SEO menu. Google and other search engines really like to see your social media credentials. Enter them again here and save the changes. Select the Facebook tab and you can see that you can enter the exact title, description, and image that shows when your main web page is shared. You can also add details to the Twitter, Pinterest, and Google tabs. I recommend entering this information, but what is nice is that you can customize each post and each page with its own social media preferences. Now click on the XML sitemaps under SEO settings. Search engines look for sitemaps, and Yoast provides one for you. I personally submit sitemaps through a different method, but I do recommend checking the Yoast SEO settings in the meantime. You can check the tools settings in Yoast SEO, but I don't usually make any changes to them. Great job going through the steps to set up your new website. As I mentioned earlier, you're about to download a checklist to help you through the simple process that will probably take you about 20 minutes to complete. Before you do, keeping in mind the importance of a professional, continually updated website for the optimized success of your business, if you ever find yourself overwhelmed or continuing to procrastinate posting blog posts on your new gorgeous website, consider delegating the task. We create targeted, optimized blog posts and integrated email campaigns that are specific to your geography and your industry. As longtime small business owner and consultant, I can say without hesitation that these two tasks alone could increase your gross sales from 30 to 50% over the course of about 24 months. This is not about a quick sale. This is about building a marketing platform that is systematic, and highly effective, high-tech and low-touch for you and right in our wheelhouse. With your blog posts also comes ongoing social media marketing. 
Your business's Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn posts are updated every weekday with strategic links, images, and hashtags. Your Facebook posts are also boosted with highly targeted, performance-based advertising. With monthly blog posts also comes a monthly video post. If you take advantage of our weekly posts, you also get three targeted landing pages that deliver your lead magnet and are integrated with three email lists. Whether monthly or weekly, posts and emails are broken into three targeted marketing segments, two prospecting or lead generation segments, and a client segment. That means if you subscribe to our monthly blog posting services once per month, we post three different posts, one for one specific prospect interest, a second for a different prospect interest, and a third for your client's general interest. For, for example, if you're a real estate agent, you could have a buyer segment, a seller segment, and a client segment. Or in any industry, you might have a paid lead interest segment, a general prospect segment, and a client segment. Why do the extra work to post on three different topics every month when you could just post one? Well, targeted topics integrate very well into the different email lists that you should be breaking your email lists into anyway, and that increases your open rate, click-through rate, and ultimately, conversion rate. Increasing your ultimate conversion rate means measurable money into your pocket, and that is what we all want. Enjoy taking a few minutes to set up your website and let us know how we can help you make even more money with your new, amazing, beautiful website. Stay tuned for our next session, set up the five most important web pages.